And anytime you hear me speak or say anything, you'll always hear me say something or my teaching will be centered around this one thing. Life prepares you for ministry and ministry prepares you for life. What I mean by that is that the two are interchangeable. When God is positioning you for greater or whatever have you, he'll start really dealing with you in your personal life and how it affects the ministry. Because whether you carry a title or not, we're all ministers. ministers. The word minister just means servant. But as he's dealing with you or your servant too, it also affects your personal life. So the two are interchangeable. What do you mean, preacher? It's just that it's unbalanced if you're a giant in here, but then you go out there and don't nobody know who you are. And so in order to be effective in all of that, you have to understand that you can't just be a church goer, but you got to be a kingdom minded person. Yes, yes. And if you're going to be a kingdom minded person and be effective, effective, excuse me. You're going to have to learn that there's some values in the kingdom of God that you must have to have a successful Christian life and just to have a successful life, period. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be talking about, ain't going to, it's, it's not only just going to help you here, but it should help you when you get out there, all right? Mm -hmm. Could someone get for me Genesis? It's going to be our main portion of scripture, Genesis 14, 18 through 20. Go ahead, Go um, ahead. say the first, if it's not the first, it's definitely one of the first place where tithes is talking about in scripture. I believe it's the first place. If it's not, I don't believe it was talked any other place before. This is the first place in scripture where tithes is talking about. We talk about tithes more than money. Remember we said it's not about money more so as much as money. All right. So here, he, he honored him if you will, he, he, he felt compelled, and no one had to ask him to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't read nowhere before that where he was compelled or asked to do it. Abraham just brought it upon himself to do it. Why? Because he valued who Melchizedek was. We'll just talk mm. about that later. He valued who he was so much that he was just compelled to do it. Now, someone get me, what is the definition of value? When, when we come to value, and I wish Sister Google was here, but she ain't here. Yeah. Who, 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 who want to take over Sister Farrah's ministry? See, she usually does it. What, what, is, what does value mean? If you think about it, we're talking about it's not more than one that's valuable. What does it actually mean? The regard that something is held to deserve. Okay. The importance We see words like high regard. Mm -hmm. We see things like importance. Mm -hmm. What else was in there? You said something else. I'm trying to get the right uh, Worth. Okay. Okay. Principles. Yeah. Okay. What else? We move. Um, beneficial. It important now, now now she just gave us the definition value is high regard something of importance that's worth y'all got to be my handwriting mm -hmm. principle and beneficial why is it important to value something hmm. 
Let's start there. Go ahead. You value it, you treat it at certain times, like you hold it in a certain regard and respect. You don't uh, mismanage it or mm. treat it, you know, in any kind of way. That's why sometimes um, people say, you know, if you if, if they valued you, they wouldn't treat you that way. Mm. Or okay. if they value you their talk about that. money. They wouldn't yeah. just mismanage the hand and just like spin it, not thinking, you. you know, yeah. that it's, you know, just not something that uh, didn't come from a place of work. So there's two different kind of ways you can value something. Okay. If I value you, I wouldn't treat you that way. Mm-hmm. And if I value, you know, I don't want to say value money, but I think we talk about this when, mm-hmm. we, uh, when somebody spit, uh, borrow money from us a lot or from the children where it's like, if you valued it, you would understand that I worked hard. To make yeah, this money yeah. and you just spend it on whatever like you just don't like i work hard for this and so that's another way of you know being valued okay i got her and then i'm coming to you what, what you what you have like responsibility oh i love that responsibility mm-hmm. bring it down for the people in the back we mean by responsibility Responsible for I have a, I have a you said respect so respect for it but value what you ask sister for your life for others as well as what you have now why is it and I know I'm throwing a lot of why why is it important for me to be a person of substance hmm. why is it hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, um, Mrs. Smith. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mrs. Smith. Because you represent the king. Mm. Oh, I, like I like that. that. I like that. So, in order for reasons, it's safe to say, if I'm going to represent well, uh-huh. you can represent. Well, we all represent. We all represent sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's whether you represent or represent well. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Determines yeah. if you're a per- person of substance. Well. Yeah. What were you going to say now? You said, I think you said character, right? Yes, I did. All right, break that down. <laughs> um, um, you want to build um, great character because, you know, that actually helps, you know, for doors to be open. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like here at Mount Zion, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're focused on home greater. Mm-hmm. So, you know, right. the character that our pastor has okay. in all aspects mm-hmm. of his life. Okay. You know, his character is what's helping break down mm-hmm. those barriers yeah. out there. And we mm-hmm. are... Um, mm-hmm. Up under his leadership, and mm-hmm. he's helping build us to also be um, have great character and, and going out, you know, and having those barriers break down as well. Mm-hmm. Could it be that <laughs> if, if I'm not a per- person of character or substance, people don't take me serious? Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, that's just cool. Poor Kusha, she just oh. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't take another day and reply. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be taken serious right. in anything you go. Now, it's one thing to be laughing and joking or whatever with character. But when we are, we're on a mission, you want to be taken serious. Right. Yeah. Amen. And in order to be taken serious, you got to be a person of substance. All of this is valid. Uh-huh. Is it in high regard? Oh, yeah. 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 Is it at a certain level of importance? Yeah. yeah. Isn't it worth, like your words have to, to worth or mean something? Mm-hmm. All of those are bad. And the reason why I, like I say, because we're talking about moving it greater. And we're talking about not only just in money, but we're talking about tithing more than money. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that was what, you know, our pastor yeah. was teaching about. If you don't understand value, you won't tithe more than money. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I like that this scripture and, and where it was placed is because can, can I be transparent? Mm-hmm. In, the, in the words of the late Joan, Joan Rivers, can we talk? Mm. <laughs> as a pastor, mm-hmm. as a leader, as a preacher, I get can I use the word offended? I get offended sometimes when stuff is not taught properly. Because if we don't teach it right, you can't live it right. Mm-hmm. Now, how can I expect you to live it right if it's not taught? 
Paul right. right. And a lot of times when they're talking about tithing more the money, giving and all of that, people don't understand value, so they move in fear. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you hear me say stuff about religion versus relationship. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with God is based on your understanding of the word and how you move. All right. But fear makes you do things out of obligation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do things out of obligation. The problem with doing things out of obligation is, and moving in fear, is once the pressure is off, people go back to doing what they was doing. Right, right, right. right. People yeah. go back to doing. How many, how many times, how many people have heard? I mean, we can monitor this. Okay, y'all, it's time to offering time. Right. Read the scripture. The preacher gets up and he reads Malachi three. Will a man rob God? Yeah. He goes over there. And he, we talk about your curse without being a curse. And then I come off real angry. And if you wasn't going to give tithe because you're scared, it'll make you go in your wallet. But as soon as the fear is off, I might do it. I might not do it. That's the problem with fear-based ministry. Wow. So as a teacher, sometimes I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> and the problem with that is that if I don't teach you principles and relationships, then you don't get the benefits of your Christian walk. Right. How many know that as, as a Christian, there are benefits to being saved? Amen. Break that down for me, Mr. Smith. I see you have your hand up. What's the benefit you think of being saved? You have assurance of who you are. Yes. You say insurance or assurance? Assurance. 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 You have assurance and insurance. Right. Okay. I'll catch that. He said, he said you have insurance. What else? What's, what's the benefit? Uh, we still talking about value. What's, what's the benefit? Yes, it's fair. Favor, um, being a blessing to others. Favor. As well as getting blessings from God. I like what she said. She said, being a blessing to others mm -hmm. as well as being a blessing. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for you being here. If you woke up this morning, you got purpose. Amen. Amen. God valued you. Yeah. enough to wake you up because there's purpose in your life that still must be fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you woke Amen. up this morning, yeah. it's only because you still got purpose. Yeah. Are we fair? Anybody yeah. else good before we get into these, these, these value points? Is this helping someone at all? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone get for me 1 Peter 5 and 6. long, but we're going to be strong. How does that mm -hmm. that's good for that. Yeah. I, I borrowed that. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, Verse 5 and 6. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Stay in the read, please. Humble, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that mm -hmm. he may ex exalt you in, you in due time. Yes. Yeah. All right. So he says, humble yourself mighty hand of God mm -hmm. that you must that he must he you. will exalt you he will in due time. time so in this value system I'm going to give you the three P's because all I'm going to start with P <laughs> number one you must have the right posture must have <clears throat> you must have the right posture. What do I mean by that, Evangelist Shaw? Spiritually. I mean, you're talking about posture. Not, it's not your natural posture. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual posture. Are, are you building a prayer life with God? Are mm -hmm. you reading your word? Are you uh, mm -hmm. making sure that you're, you're taking heed to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. That is your spiritual posture. Not your natural. Okay. Now, Sister Wash said something earlier. We were talking about value. And she said the word, that C word, character. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the character? I believe having the right posture is operating, and it's one little H word right here. 
and it's found in our scripture. Humility. Mm -hmm. Humility. What's the opposite of, of humility? Pride. Pride. What's another word for pride? Yes, sir. I was about to say it. Another word for pride. You want it, though. That's, that's it, too. Pride. You are a what type of person? Starts with an A. Arrogant. Arrogant person. That is. Okay. <laughs> You want to be a high value person, you have to have a spirit of humility. humility. Amen. And the thing about having a spirit of humility is if you don't have it, God will allow situations right. to happen that will humble you. Yes. Yes. That will humble you. Either you're going, as the scriptures say, humble yourself oh, yeah. under, the, under, the, under the mighty hand of God voluntarily. Or oh, you're going to be humble. The prophet Kendrick Lamar said it best. Sit down, be humble. A lot of people don't get where they need to get in God simply because they have no humility. If you broke and you arrogant, how do you think God will give you some money? How are you going to treat people if you ain't if you ain't humble, you'll lord over people, you'll treat people any kind of way, all because you're not humble. Can I share, can I share a personal testimony? I dealt with this. Man, God had to deal with me and I had a real life situation. So, about five years ago, about five, about five years ago, She's singing a song. So, um, but a little bit over five years ago, I accepted a position. I was uh, um, my first position is because I work at IT. I'm a solutions engineer. You know, pretty high solutions. The problem with that was we had we had a, a hiring class or whatever. I had worked for the company that got promoted within, and there was about forty of us in the training class that started. And Pastor Harry knew. He was, if I wasn't the smartest man in the room, I was one of the smartest. No, I knew I was smart. I was like, oh, I ain't nothing. He's grow smarter than me. And I knew it. Wow. Throughout the interview process, it took me three three months to get the interview. I mean, to get the job. I started out Valentine's Day. My man got the job. And then I started two weeks later. And they were, and all throughout the whole process, everybody was telling me how they were glad that I accepted the position, I was going to kill it, and all of that, and, and my ego was there. I walked in the room. Wow. The H and I C is in the building. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. this morning. All right. All right. So, <laughs> I just knew <laughs> that my boo boo smelled like potpourri. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man, so I, I knew it. <laughs> so, we were doing an exercise, second day of class, second or third day of class. The name, of the, the name of the exercise was Know Your Audience. And so we had to do a role play. Okay. And so um, one guy was supposed to be the president of the company, another oh, wow. was the engineer um, of this company, and then we had a sales rep, and I played the engineer. So we had a third group to come. I'm like, I got this. Oh, wow. So, so in the point of the exercise is you have to convince the person you're talking to to stay and keep the meeting. Because otherwise they get up, oh, I got a call, and then they will walk, they will walk away, they never came back. Mm -hmm. So we're about the third group to come. And like I said, I know I'm one of the, I know if I'm not the smartest dude in the room, I'm one of the smartest dude. I'm being engineer. I got up in there, start talking, trying to impress him with my technical knowledge, if you will. Two minutes into the exercise, one of the short, dude gets up and walks in the back. All my stuff. Only one group got it right. So then, there's a point. Of, there's a point I'm making. I'm going in. So then, after that, they're giving us review, and they said, "Mr. Heron, you know what you did wrong?" <laughs> he said, "You didn't know how to talk to me." He said, "You were talking at me. You were talking technical terms." And he said, "But that was good for the guy I was sitting next to, but you didn't know how to relate to me." Mm. And so I took that and I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. 
What am I saying? Because I was so arrogant, I was embarrassed All right. in front of 40 people. Uh -huh. About 35, 40 people, I was embarrassed because I thought I knew it all. Yeah. Wow. Here's the, here's the problem with this, and I'm open up the floor. A lot of smart people, if you will, because I consider myself smart, mm -hmm. struggle in this area. Yeah. You don't know how to relate to the person that you're talking to. Yeah. So you think that when people don't receive you, okay. oh, they just don't want to hear what I got to say. That's right. They just rejected my knowledge. Mm -hmm. No, baby, you don't know how to be humble. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you don't know. You don't know your audience. I didn't know my audience and who I was talking to. Right. Wow. When I learned that lesson, I started evaluating every relationship I had in my life. <laughs> are people are people not hearing what I what I gotta say because That's do I come across more. like a know it all? All right. Here's a bigger problem with that. When this happened, I was entering my second year as being a pastor. Should have knew better. God had to deal with me. No, you still had an arrogant spirit. You wasn't humble. Come on, you helping somebody this morning. Maybe that's too transparent. No, that's no. right. Maybe that's too transparent. That's but can you look at, because we're talking about tithing more than money. We're talking about sowing into people. Could you, could you honestly look at yourself and think about relationships that you have and then how some people are not open to you? Right. Is it really they have a problem or you the smartest person in the world? Oh, All right. Help me. Anybody else got some feedback? <laughs> Knowing how, will you master this? If you master this, this, this one little thing, you'll be surprised at how many doors are open up to you. All right. The thing about being humble, too, it opens up how many people you're able to talk to. Yes, that's right. Yes. That's right. Or people that are willing to talk to you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You ain't gotta always be an auto correct, auto correct everybody. You ain't always gotta correct somebody, yeah. or even even correction comes by love. What's wrong with saying? Yeah. Now, does Deacon Crooked feel threatened by me saying that? No. But what if I came to him and said, oh, yeah, you know you ain't broke that, that right. You said Acts 7 is Acts 5. Come on, D. D. Come on, D. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Is he going to want to open up to me? No. Oh, wow. no. Because of being humble, right. now I know how to value people. Right. right. All right. If you want to move in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. every relationship if it's ordained by God, should be valued to you. Right. Should be valued to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I'm saying we miss the boat simply because we don't know how to handle people. Right. And before God <laughs> trusts you with millions, could He trust you with a soul? Oh, amen. Wow. Come on now. Smith, yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I don't want to get into a lot of details. No, go ahead. But. <clears throat> Early on in my work life, mm -hmm. I had a job where I was an inspector. Okay. Um, and as a new hire, I worked with someone else. Okay. So we were doing our inspections of various uh, rooms and uh, locations. And I came across this one place that was in violation okay. of their own standards. Okay. <coughs> so I wrote them up, and they had to close the room. It, it, it's called the clean room. Okay. Uh, they had to close the clean room down. Okay. So now this is costing the company money. Okay. Uh, big money. Uh, my partner and I were coming down the hallway and the uh, supervisor of this room okay. came to my partner who was Caucasian okay. and said to him Adam you can't close this room he, he insinuated himself between Adam and me okay. 
Okay. And his back was to me. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. All right? Oh, wow. Um, and so he's pleading his case. Okay. And Adam's listening to him. At the end of his, of his soliloquy, okay. uh, Adam said, you got to talk to him. Mm. The man turned beet red. Mm. <laughs> he had to humble himself. Mm-hmm. He had to realize. Mm. <clears throat> yes, Deacon Croker. I heard it, y'all. Okay. Yeah, I work in an old emotion. Mm-hmm. And every time something comes back, I'm the one that gets called. Mm-hmm. I just trouble people. Okay. Something comes back, staring out of the street, raising the arms, and about the old one. Mm-hmm. So most of the time, I have to turn down and be home and talk to them. Mm-hmm. And I told them that the place called Snail House. So we drove across the way, had to cut across, sit down, come back, find out what the problem is. That's how we do it. So that, I don't know. It was me. Mm-hmm. Every time I look around, and nobody else would call but me. Mm-hmm. So you would have made that they were calling on? Huh? You said they kept calling on you? Yeah, in other words, you know, when when this person come in outrageous and talk, see I was uh, doing I was uh, what's called a battery tech, okay, a power chain, uh work supervisor, I was training people, doing everything else. Every time all of something come up, I was the one. So why do you think they kept calling on you? Because mm-hmm. see what I was humble enough mm-hmm. and to have sense enough to understand <laughs> and figure out what the situation was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one reason why they called. Right? Okay. So that's why most of the time they called them. Okay. Because see, everybody else, you got a a hard spirit, you know, mm-hmm. something like this. You know, I'm about, you're not right. Okay. They ain't going, you know, they want somebody to fix the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was the one. Most mm-hmm. of the time, I fixed the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why they call them. But he said something very powerful. He said because he was humble. Mm-hmm. He didn't care nothing about his position. Mm-hmm. He had a spirit that was humble enough that you could receive him. Right. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a saying that's been quoted, but I don't know if a lot of people understand it. People don't care how much you know that's right. until they know how much you care. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is so that true. Is so true. Mm-hmm. What good is a message that's not received? That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey. What good is having a message, but your message is not received? You got the wrong spirit. All right. Mm-hmm. Don't care how much you know. Yeah, okay. This right here. But this right here. Trips up a lot of people. And the thing about it, with, and that's why I'm so anti religious, because a religious, we teach you to operate under being performance driven. And when you're performance driven, there's a lot of religious personality. You walk up in the room. Yeah. 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 Yes, Lady Palmer. Um, I don't know. You guys probably touched on this already, but Jesus showed and portrayed the. Mm-hmm. what humility is all about. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. He did not have to come in this world like he did. Right. right. Okay, but he did. Mm-hmm. He did not have to stay as humble as he did, but mm-hmm. he did. Now, we know he is the king. Okay? Right. So he could have done all things, everything. Mm-hmm. And he could have had all the gold. He could have had everything. Mm-hmm. But he did not live his life that way on this mm-hmm. earth. Mm-hmm. And so he right. showed the well, ultimate come on now. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. When you know you the man or you know you that maybe if you will, you ain't gotta let nobody know. When you walk in a room, everybody know who you is. The people who do that is people who ain't sure of themselves. Don't let them folks fool you. Right. Say a lot. Yes, we're gonna say something. I was going to piggyback on what Suzanne uh, said, it's like, you know, your purpose. And I think about, you know, your value. I know when I talked about it, my parents, 
they talk about um, being caught up in a power struggle with their kids going back and forth. Like, why are you, or are you not still authority if mm-hmm. you don't go back and forth? Are you right. not still mm-hmm. the person that you said what you said mm-hmm. and that still walk away when you want to go back and forth and have to like speak up and show? Mm-hmm. Then that's when you don't even the question becomes: Do you know who you yeah. are? Do you know your value? Do you know your worth? Do you know your uh, purpose? Or do you feel like it's the exterior part mm. that shows that? Because mm. that, doesn't, like that. that doesn't really show me anything. That you, you're, that's what you think it looks like. Mm. Instead of actually being wow. somebody who has has value. Know. Exactly. <laughs> that's how the show don't make that's it. That's always true. Right. Help somebody <laughs> All right. I was gonna mess now, I will leave it alone. We got move. I sure was gonna mess with that. <laughs> Anybody else on this point before we move forward? Mm-hmm. On this point. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Yes, Deacon. You got to be like Jesus. Mm-hmm. He humbled himself. Mm-hmm. You know? They talked about it, defeated, mm-hmm. and everything that walked with the so he humbled. He said, I'm here to do my father's will. Mm-hmm. Not my will. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so you got to be like him. Mm-hmm. And on, and in other words, you got to learn to stand pressure. When you're under pressure, that's a big uh, because see, you mess around and start getting upset, and getting angry, you get out of control. Mm-hmm. So while you're under pressure, you got to stay home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Someone get me um, 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10. 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10. 4, 8 through 10. 8, 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed through on, on Shona, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in his own um, hither to eat bread. Second thing, we talk about the value system, right? Going along with time more than money. You must prepare. You gotta prepare. Things just don't happen. You know, we like to to to, to prophesy and, and, and say things gonna happen and and all of that, but things don't just happen got to prepare. Mm-hmm. You understand the value system and then going along with tithing more than money, you got to prepare for greater. It's good to say, how many want greater? I'll say greater. <laughs> but in order for greater to actually happen, you got to prepare for it. You got to prepare for it. It don't just happen. Now I know religion says this. Matter of fact, can I, can, can I use, who can I use that won't get offended good? Can I use you? Matter of fact, I'm going to use Brother Shaw. All right. Yes, sir. Real service. Come here, man of God. Just got to stand before the Lord. Stand before God. Okay. Man of God, I just see, I just see money all over you. I just see money, 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 money. I'm going to it, too, one day. Are, are you married? To a beautiful young lady right here. Woman of God, come here. Come here. Yes. Y'all don't see what I see. I just see, I don't know what I see. I see I just see money all over you. Matter of fact, when you walk with that blonde hair, I see the dollar sign. I see the blonde hair. I see the dollar sign. I just see money over you. Matter of fact, spin around, spin around, spin around. That means God turned it around. Yeah, that means God turned it around. Spin around, spin around, spin around. 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 Spin around, spin Stand before the presence of the Lord. I'm going somewhere. 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 I'm going som
I see dollar signs over you. I matter of fact, I heard Kachin when you walked in. <laughs> I heard Kachin when you walked in. Matter of fact, hold out your hands. Yes, yes, hold out your hands. All right, now turn them over. Okay, God gonna bless you with money front and back. Yes, I see money. I see money. Yes, you see, yes, yes. Okay, ooh, and she got a ring on. Okay, she get married, child. The Lord just showed me she get married. Amen. Yes, amen. You going somewhere? What am I saying? I'm clowning, but I'm actually making a point. What good is it me give, giving you? And getting you excited about right. what God's going to do, but I ain't prepared you in the background. Right. Okay. That's good. That's so true. And I'm gonna say some stuff. I'm gonna step on a limb, limb and it's definitely gonna break. Break it. Sometimes when I'm in service and I see that stuff going on and I'm doing this, I'm like, look at this phonery right here. Mm. Right. When they do that to you, it's almost like me giving you candy before supper time. Wow. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to eat, if you will, but when dinner time comes, you're still hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. Prophecy. Can I go there? Uh, True prophecy of the Lord is word based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True prophecy of the Lord yes, gives you direction. Yes, All right. And as a preacher and as a pastor, I am offended when people play with people's emotions. Can I say that? Uh -huh. And then when you don't receive of the Lord, you go back frustrated mm -hmm. in the same situation right. where you were. Right. Right. And then the arrogant preacher would be like, well, daughter, you didn't receive it because you didn't know how to receive it. You ain't giving it right. No, you got to give people direction. Mm -hmm. We got to give people some instructions. Mm -hmm. I know that was a little strong, but in order for you to operate in your greater God is not going to allow you just to get excited. You drop some money in a bucket and bypass the principles of God. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. And if you're listening, or whoever, I don't know if we film it, and you a pastor, you preach, you did that, you're dead wrong. Woe unto the, to the shepherd that, shot, that scattered the flock. Woe unto the prophet that plays with the people of motion of God. Woe unto you. You got to prepare for greater. It don't just happen. All right. Get excited about the word. Embrace the word. Digest the word of God. But after you've done all of that, go back and do that. All right. Go back and prepare. Because it ain't going to just fall on you. When she perceived that, and I know I said a strong word. Is y'all okay? Because I said some strong stuff just there. No, no, no. You got transparency. Transparency. When she recognized who the man of God was, yeah. she went back and prepared. All right. Amen. Yes, she went back immediately and started preparing. Yes, she did. Yeah. Now, here's the crazy part. She didn't just prepare, but she brought the right stuff with her. Okay. She okay. said, we perceive that what? This is a man of God. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. She got her bed. She got a table. Uh -huh. She got a stool. All right. A lampstand. And yeah. she got a candlestick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, before I break it down, why do you think she brought those stuff in? We All read right. the scripture a dozen times, but why do you think she brought those particular things in when she was preparing? She brought the bed because she knew that he would need rest. Mm. Come on. You want it. Lesson. He brought the table because he knows that he would need to sit at the table. Mm. Mm -hmm. Started the word at the table. Started the word at the table. Had to eat. Doesn't the scripture say in Psalms, he prepares a table before me? Yeah. 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 In the presence of my enemy? Yeah. That ain't that, don't that sound like preparation? Uh -huh. What's the stool for? So he to, to sit. But, but, but why, do you think, why do you think a stool? What, what am I doing if I'm sitting like this? What posture am I doing? No, no, if I'm sitting up. No, I'm Praise sitting. Praise I'm Praise sitting in an elevated place. Yeah. Before you come out, your mind got to come out first. Mm -hmm. All right. So she brought, a, she brought a stool to say, I'm resting in an elevated place. I'm not just sitting around doing nothing, yeah. but I'm prepared for it. Uh -huh. Amen. 
I, I'm resting in it. In other words, I ain't going to be anxious about how God's going to do it. Mm -hmm. I just know he's going to do it. So I'm resting it. I'm preparing, but I'm still resting at the same time. Right. And sometimes some people don't get what they need to get from God. It's because in their, their season of preparation, you're so anxious. And God says, I need you to still prepare. But as Brother Smith says, I need you to rest. Okay. <clears throat> I need you to rest. Rest in the fact that God's going to do it. Rest in the fact that if I fulfill his promise, he's responsible for bringing it to pass. Okay. It ain't only God's will is God's bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's your will, it's your bill. Yeah. You got to own that. But if God, if, if God promised that, the, the only thing I got to do is, is okay. recognize when I'm in my season yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of preparation. The candlestick represents light. Right. right. Let God be the light in your situation. Right. Contrary to what people say, you ain't going to get no prophecy and you're going to walk into this, that, and the third if your lifestyle is walking in darkness. Right. Ain't going to happen. This preacher said, ain't going to happen. I can't lie to you. Can't lie to you. Can't lie to you and won't lie to you. In the words of my big brother, Pastor Murray, talk back if you can. <laughs> talk back if you can. This is stuff that gets bypassed. And if we if we gonna walk into that, we're gonna have to understand value. And we're gonna have to understand that there's some ways that I need to start doing certain stuff different. That's the definition of what they call insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, but you're expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. You're expecting a different outcome. Mm -hmm. People who do that set you up for failure. Right. Mm -hmm. Floor is open. Come on, talk back to me. How important is it for me now, Sister Wash, in my season of preparation? It's vital. It's vital. Why is it vital? Why do you use the word body? The word body. Because <laughs> it's extremely important. It's a must. It's a must. It, it has to be done. You have to prepare. You must have a pot like that. You know, we minister, we have to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. In order to prepare ourselves, we have to. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yes, Pastor. Preparation, when, when God prepares something, mm -hmm. a lot of times we prepare a girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Showed it to you mm -hmm. beforehand, yeah. mm -hmm. but we were so tunnel vision, mm -hmm. we didn't recognize the preparation. What you say, tunnel vision? Yes, sir. And so, uh, so, so, when 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 God is taking you through something, okay, okay, He already knows the outcome. Right. Okay. Yeah. First of all, when you when you preparing anything, when you cooking something, you preparing it ahead of time. Okay. That brisket. Like, that, like that brisket yesterday, yeah. <laughs> you don't wait until you get to the black. You don't get to the black. You remember when you prepare along the way. That's God right. prepares us for the storm along the way. And uh -huh. somebody. Right. And so we so crazy, we wait till it starts snowing and realize we need snow boots. Uh -oh. <laughs> we live in a we live in we live north of the way. You know, and then different things like that. And so we have to recognize when God is speaking to us. All right. And so many times we don't hear because we're not paying attention mm. to key things in which God saying to us. Okay. And so, you know, we have to totally understand that preparation is necessary yes. to where God is taking us. Necessary. Look at everything that we're doing now. God is preparing us for greater. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we think the pastor just saying, you want greater, just to be saying you want greater, but God is preparing us we're greater. Mm -hmm. And so think about the little steps that we're taking now. Okay. And sometimes some people wonder, why are we doing what we're doing? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why we're doing it. God is preparing us for the multitude. All right. Ooh. And if you can't deal with what we have now, mm -hmm. how are you going to be able to deal with the multitude when they come? Mm -hmm. All right. So little All right. things that right. we're doing along the way, Amen. we have to catch it. Yes. Because Amen. if we don't catch it, we're going to miss it. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Ooh, I like that. 
like that. Sister Palmer. Uh, I was going to say I really love the uh, illustration you showed from Prophecy to
sometimes visual does a lot. Yeah. You put that, put out a tent. You just put up that three foot this out there. But once we put that big white tent up, they had no other reason but to recognize that something great was going on. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna save it for the end. I'm gonna save it for the end. I got you. Can't, can't look at them like you won't put hands on. So <laughs> the last thing I'm, I'm gonna get you, but the last thing I'm definitely gonna get you is found in our base scripture, Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Mm-hmm. Talks about Abraham giving to Melchizedek. Mm-hmm. After you have the right posture, after you prepare, the last thing you need to do, which you kind of kind of hit on it. The next level is position. position. You gotta position yourself yeah. mm-hmm. for greater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to position yourself for it. And one thing I, I gotta say this and then I'm leaving. I got you, Sister Paul. I promise you I do. No problem. No problem, <laughs> Abraham, or Abram as he called in the scripture, mm-hmm. recognized who Machesedek was. Mm-hmm. Now Machesedek was was interesting because he was high priest. And he's also king. A little background. He's high priest, and he's also king. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Well, we know that Jesus is also our high priest and our king. Point number one. Right. Then it's, we have to look at what he provided in the scripture, which was read earlier. He provided bread and wine. Bread for what is essential for life. Wine is the spirit. So you need the essential plus you need the spirit. Then he honored and valued him for where he came from. He was the king of Salem. Salem would eventually become Jerusalem. Matter of fact, Jerusalem is translated to me house of Salem. Got to teach this thing for a little bit. So after seeing those three things, he says, you know what? I have to line up now and position because I recognize who I'm under. I'm recognizing who, what he's given to me, and then I'm recognizing um, what he provided and where he comes from. So we talked about tithing more than money, right? Those people just want my money. But Abraham didn't have that problem because he realized I'm not given to just anybody, I'm standing in front of Christ. Amen. So because I'm standing for, before Christ, yes, I automatically line up. Because mm. I know what Christ provides, I automatically line up. All right. Since I know where he's from, he's Jerusalem, the king of Jerusalem, king of king, prince of peace. I automatically line up. When you recognize who God really is, this shouldn't be a problem. Amen. All right. right. Lady Palmer, I got to get it before she goes. Oh, I was just going to say after the tent. Mm-hmm. Now, on Friday, we were in front of a church. It wasn't like they didn't recognize 